Welcome to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina for Gatekeeper and Heiser Media's combined coverage of the 2023 InnovaDisc's Myrtle Beach Open. Thank you as always to Cosmic Disc Golf, D-Town Disc Golf, and Revert Disc Supply for making this coverage possible. I'm Nathan Johnson joined in the booth by Dan Brooks Wells. Dan, who do we have on our card for this back, back nine of round two? Yeah, we got an exciting one. Welcome back, guys. We got Holly Finley. We got Nina Guerrero from Bowling Green, Kentucky. We got world champ Paige Shu from Charlotte, North Carolina. And we got Jordan Linz from Palm City, Florida. Awesome. Jumping right into the back nine on hole 10 is a par three at 273 feet. If you have a forehand, that is the ideal play. Um, it's pretty much a wide open hole that finishes to the right at the end. You don't want to come in early right because that rough is really thick, but as long as you make your way, get the distance right and bend a, a little bit around that corner, you should have yourself a look. Also, quick shout out to Ace Run Pro for giving us this great, these great hole previews. Previews, we really appreciate it. Page is leading us off with a slow turning, probably a mid range, I would imagine. Maybe a putter. But did she catch something up there a little bit that kind of kicked her out? Yeah, I think she tickled some of those branches up at the top there. Kind of just drifted the disc back out into the open. That's the miss to make, though. Like I said, you don't want to be early right. Don't something cut. like this. Oh, yeah, that worked out just fine. Yeah. And high there for Jordan. We'll have herself a circle two look coming up. It's tough shape to make with the backhand, especially, you know, knowing how much width to give it and how much angle to give the disc on a hole like this. But looks like Holly might have thrown it perfectly. Flexes out a little early. She'll have a circle two look. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's a combination of everything, right? Angle, stability of the disc, height, width. There's a lot to think about. Yeah, whereas this shot, the forehand plays a lot more straightforward. Nina able to just throw it nice and flat. Yeah, know exactly. the stability and speed of that disc at the end of the flight is going to give her that little bit of finish and uh, ends up with the best shot of the group. We saw Nina go to that forehand quite a bit on the front nine. It's nice on a course like this to have that forehand and backhand combination. Um, just really allows you to, to throw a lot less, you know, one angle or two angle shots and, uh, you know, rely on some overstable discs rather than having to throw, you know, some touchy hyzer flip and turnover shots. Yeah. Holly with a, with a good long bid there. Give it up just a little bit, but Nina knocks down the birdie start off our back nine a great straddle putt there knocks it down from just inside the circle nice putt there from jordan as well yeah and guys do not forget to leave in the comments what you think the shot of the round is so when you see it let us know yeah that putt from nina definitely a contender See if it holds up. Jump in. Oh, wait, we have one more. One more tap in. I'm getting ahead of myself. Tap. tap it in. While she's tapping it in, we'll give a shout out to Deanne Carey, the only other birdie a hole 10 on the day. Nice. Jumping in hole 11, par 3, 366 feet. I think this one plays best for a turnover backhand if you have it. Um, it's kind of shapes a little bit. The gap you have to hit. You ideally want the disc moving from like right to left while you hit it, um, but the left side trees come up quick enough that it kind of shapes better for this turnover backhand like Nina's showing us rather than the forehand. Yeah. And she Perfect. just pured it. Yeah. yeah. All right, everyone do that. Yeah, I guess this hole is easy. 366 through a gap. This is looking similar if it fights back, and it is. Apparently, <gasps> this hole is just easy. I missed the mem that memo. Well, <laughs> you have another chance next year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's see if Holly's able to match. All right. This is actually not a bad Fights. kick. Yeah, yeah. That, fought, that fought really well. If she kicked just straight right into those woods, that's, that's insta bogey land. So should still have a chance to save the par from where she's at. Jordan barely 
missing of the left side of that gap. Makes her way most of the way up there, comes up a little short, so she'll have a long, long pitch up to, to grab the par. Yeah, it should be an easy part. Holly here, um, she definitely got the best out of that kick, whatever happened. Because um, that seems like she would have been in jail if that wouldn't have happened. So, leaves it a little long. Um, but, you know, she probably has the confidence to make that comebacker. Yeah, a little extra pine needle scoot there on that approach. Nice up there from Jordan. Let's see if she's able to save this par. A little low with that straddle she had to straddle really wide out it's hard to it's hard to build up um, a lot of momentum for that distance of a putt nice Locked putt up. there from Nina yeah back to back birdies and she just entered into a three-way tie for right now and we got some tap in so it'll change but she is in the conversation yeah definitely playing well not seen her play before on coverage, but came to play today, that's for sure. And last but not least, we got Paige tapping it in for the birdie. Nicely done. Only two birdies on the day. We saw them right here. Hole 12, part three, only 200 feet. You will eat. Most players, I don't think, are going to take this straightforward gap, although it does look very straightforward and enticing. I think you're going to see most people go out and around. On the right-hand side, there is a wide spike hyzer gap that is a little more friendly, uh, but maybe I'll be proven wrong here today. I don't know. Uh, I do see a lot of people take the straight gap, but I think the hyzer gap is just uh, a lot less scary, so we'll see. Okay, I'm 0 for 1. Is this an right. ace run? You're not, you're not really over one because all the other ones you called out, you were right. So you're three for four. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I guess yes. they're all just going to opt for this for this straight line. I mean, again, if you're confident throwing putters dead straight, two hundred feet, then there's the you know there's no reason not to take the straight gap. But like, see, you see this gap over here that I think Jordan's going to show us all. It's wide open. It's a big, nice, wide hyzer. Yeah, which kind of put a little too much juice on that one, but if you if you, you give it the height, the disc is going to fade back at the end and give you a putt. So yeah, you, I mean you've heard the term hyzer is wiser, right? I actually haven't. This is this you is have new, not. It rhymes, thing. so it I has know, to be right. I, I'm surprised yeah. I have. Yeah, I know everything that rhymes has to be right. Yeah, that's just that's a, a that's a rule. Yeah. Hey, but never mind. <laughs> Either way. Skip it. <laughs> four four good shots from the from the entire card. We got some outside looks. We got some shorter looks. Jordan kind of just has to end up pitching up there. Uh, see if Nina can keep the birdie streak alive. Just a little low, out of the hand. Just a little low. It's been a consistent miss for her so far. So you can just lift that arm up a bit more and get the spin. We see a chink in the armor from Paige. That's kind of the miss we saw yesterday. Um, really haven't seen that issue so far today. Yeah, just kind of pulled it a little bit. Surprising miss. This actually played as the second easiest hole on the course for FPO at a 2.86 average. So pretty surprising to not see any of the any of the four members of this card come away with the birdie. I'm sure they're they're all kicking themselves because it's definitely one that you want to get but you know just kind of letting that those chase card and other members of the field kind of get one back on them makes for exciting disc golf let's let's tighten the field up a bit you know yeah just just a little bit just a little bit Par frame here on hole 12 Holly taps that one in The Innova Alien, our newest multi-purpose disc. It's like nothing you've seen before, with a pretty beefy mid-range bottom, but a very familiar sonic top. It creates physics-defying stability. From intermediate to pro-level power, backhands to forehands, the Alien. Flying to a dealer near you. 
third year of the Throat Pink Women's Siskop Championship. We are hosting women from all over the world. This week isn't just about the uh, top women in our game. We have opportunities for spectators and fans and women who are wanting to learn the game to come out and be a part of the experience. Um, we're doing our clinic Saturday and the touring pros, when they finish their round, will come over and they'll teach you how to play disc golf. So you can come out, you can watch them, you can learn, you can just be a part of this um, experience that's all about women's disc golf. Hole 13, sponsored by Elevation Discs, you'll love to see it, is a par five, first of the day, 595 feet. The tee shot is basically just a little chip around the corner. This is what I like to call a reverse par four, where the tee shot is a placement shot, and then the next shot is more of that power distance shot. Uh, it's basically 100, and I think it's 180 feet to the back wall. You do not want to throw it any farther, um, kind of similar to hole, uh, normal hole two at Splinter City. And then the next shot is going to be a nice long straight shot, probably in 350 foot range, depending on where your tee shot goes. So step one, throw this chip around the corner, mm -hmm. pretty much perfect there from Nina. Um, puts her in the fairway and, and in a position to attack on the next. I would imagine for the MPO is probably listed as a par four. Yeah. Um, these girls are playing it at a par five currently. Correct. Yep. Uh, there's two holes yeah, on this okay. course, uh, okay. hole, this hole and hole number 16 that uh, normally on the course are listed as par fives, but for the tournament, the MPO field plays them as par fours. Right. Leaks a little long from Jordan. That's a very common mistake that you'll see is just because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to come up short going around the corner. You'll see a lot of players just juice it a little bit, find that back wall of trees, and it really pinches off your angle moving forward. So. Three good yeah. shots. We'll see what Jordan's able to work with. We might have to add one to the forehand roller count depending on uh, how <laughs> it goes. That looks to leak a little more right yeah, than she wanted, but go. gets a fortunate kick out to the center. Um, Holly, the only one who did a standstill off the tee, it looks like she put herself in the perfect spot. That, if I was looking down a line, that's kind of what I feel like I would have wanted. And she gets a little roll out. Okay. That was nice. Yeah, great shot there. Definitely going to put her in a good spot to grab the birdie. You know, this is looking like mm -hmm. a good line as well. Yeah, it seems like a fair um, path to shoot down. Uh, this is... You know, as we were talking yesterday, one of those golf holes where you can't just overpower something off the tee. So yeah. I, I like I like the design. Yeah, definitely a par five, right? I mean, you can only bite off, like I said, about 180 feet off the tee. It's literally impossible to get any more than that. So, you know, you're looking at over 400 into the pin, depending on where you end up. So definitely a, a true three shot hole. Um, these ladies all looking like they have about under 200 into the pin. Give this a run. Ooh. Great shot. Yeah. Beautiful. The, 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 the pace on that was fantastic. A couple outside looks at the eagle here. Call it like an 80-footer or so. Just pitching that one up for Holly. We'll see if Paige gives this one a little bit. Oh, you know she is. Uh, maybe that was maybe that was a little farther than I thought. Yeah. But hey, I still think she was trying. <laughs> if you're laying it up for the birdie, I don't think anybody is going to complain. We're looking at a star frame, I think, if my math is correct. So a nice bounce back for the entire card after a bit of a disappointing hole number 12. This did play as the easiest hole in the course at a 4.76 average, so definitely one you want to pick up. Yeah, it's still it's still definitely the par five. I mean, it's only point two four under par, so mm -hmm. good amount of score separation across the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely see how you can get in trouble off the tee, and then if you force something, then you can really get in trouble. Yeah, yeah, it happens. It happens quick out here. But uh, cool. yeah, well, well played from the whole car. Nina going to tap it in to finish out. Round out the star frame. Jumping into hole 14 is a par four, 457 feet. Pretty much goes straight for the first 300 or so, and then you get a slow drift back to the right towards the basket. I think most players are probably just gonna throw some sort of straight backhand off the tee here. Um, you could throw a forehand if you've got it. 
uh, anything to kind of keep you in the fairway and bite off as much as you can. This basket is a, a nice little memorial. Uh, I don't remember the fella's name, but um, it's a nice little touch they've added here on the, uh, the elevated green. Yeah, that looks like a really cool built up uh, green. And Nina just pulling it a little bit. But it is a par four, so maybe she'll have something up to the basket. It's looking nice from Paige, but just a little overturned. But yeah, there's kind of like a, a tiny little walking path that you could consider a fairway on the right hand side uh, if you do kick right off after your tee shot. Um, that, that may be, you know. Uh, enticing to some people but um yeah i think most most players are trying to take this left side fairway just something that just drifts a little bit from left to right the entire way and uh kind of settles down in the middle something like this uh, looks pretty perfect shot. yeah nice. yeah she got that really late flip which is kind of the differentiator out of those shots yeah, you can see that tiny little fairway i mentioned mm -hmm off to the right. Nina does not opt to take it, just taking the traditional fairway, kind of just playing for par at this point. Paige needs a, oh, this looks great if it holds. Yeah, and it did. Wow, what a shot. Yeah, still a tester at that elevated basket, but yeah, giving herself a chance. Got a forehand from Jordan here into the green, catches some late cabbage, but yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know if she runs that 40 footer on the uh, the elevated basket can get you into some trouble if you're not careful. Catch is a little late cabbage, but that one looked pretty good out of the hands. That might be a layup too. We'll see. Yeah, Holly's like close to pin high after that great drive and banks it off the the brick wall. Great approach. Oh, she's giving us a yeah. run. Jordan yeah. Linz from circle two. Let's go. On the high rise. I didn't know if she was going to give it a run, but no fear from this woman. That's a great putt. Great birdie. Contender. Contender for shot of the round. For sure. Now Nina has to run it. Oh, yeah. You can't watch yeah. that and lay up. Exactly. She Good comes bid. Up a bit short. Yeah, just a little low. Did shoe with a nice birdie putt as well. It's gonna be an awkward putt from Holly. On on tall, this type basket is like taller than a normal elevated basket. It's worth mentioning. So like these yeah. short putts are like you're like you don't know exactly how. Yeah. To, you know. It's a little daunting. She she's she's pretty tall though. So. That's true. This is true. Yeah. Just makes you think a little bit. I do ponder. Yes. Nice job knocking that down. Nina, unfortunately, going to drop a stroke there with the bogey. Drop two strokes, really, to the rest of the card. As we jump into hole 15, par 3, 237. Just a dead straight gap you got to hit. And um, yeah, then, then you'll give yourself a birdie putt. It's pretty much just these two trees at the end of the fairway. Um, if you split them, you're gonna have yourself a look. I think this hole is a little longer than 237. There's two basket positions it, on this one, and I think it's in the long pin, so it's probably closer to 280. Okay, is it um, is it uphill at all? No, just flat. No, this whole course flat. is flat. Okay. Oh, There's it's not flat. a lot of elevation here in Myrtle Beach, so it's, uh, yeah, just a little early release there from Paige out to the left but yeah this this hole is just what you see is what you get you just gotta gotta hit that gap and uh get yourself a putt yeah very straightforward i mean you can't blame anyone but yourself if you don't get through yeah. uh, but easier said than done yeah not a bad shot from jordan just overturned it a little bit caught a late tree she'll be out in circle two again holly kind of under a little too much hyzer there catches the left side you can opt for the forehand. It's a little bit of a more of a forced flex route, and she also catches a late tree. But everyone is either scrambling or has a long bid. Oh no! 
just catches a, the first tree yeah. out of the hand. That's it. Yeah, that's one of those <laughs> you you're like, if I just miss that one tree, yeah. I'll be good. <laughs> it, it happens to everybody. It's unfortunate, but it's bound to happen to you, you know? So you just pick it up and move on. Oh, yeah. Dude, a month ago, I, I had a shot that literally went one foot, one foot in front of me because I hit a tree. <laughs> like, it's, it's it's not fun, but it does. It literally does happen. It does. You just gotta laugh, you know. Like you can yeah, get a, you can get frustrated after, you know. But man, unfortunate bogey, drops a stroke. Um, I believe to everybody, correct? Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna have a couple of par tappins, three par tappins from the rest of the card. So, like you said, just just let that going. field get a little bit closer. You know, <laughs> we love we love a good amount of score separation. Those pressure shots at the end of the round. Hole 16, second par five of the day, 738 feet. Very similar shape to the previous par five that we saw, except a little longer on the tee shot. You're probably looking to push somewhere in the 300 foot range on the tee shot here. Um, if you want to get to that corner, second shot is gonna be a nice straight shot down the fairway. And then at the end, uh, does come back to the left. So kind of a, a subtle, um, you know, just, an L-shaped shot um, with a little, uh, another little hook at the end. Um, I just did a terrible job of uh, describing the hole, but Jordan is doing a great job of showing you how you want to throw the hole. So just watch her and don't listen to me. <laughs> I thought it was fine. Give yourself some grace, you know. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Guys, leave some love in the comments for Nathan. <laughs> fine. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> Two great shots so far. Um, we'll see if, if Nina's able to match here. Yeah, this, this tee shot is, is pretty pretty open. Um, the, the miss is just you don't want to find those backside trees, which looks like Nina may have caught some of. I don't know. We'll see if she got through or not. But um, it's more about distance control here to just make sure, you know, you pick the right disc and um, don't go a little too far like Paige did there. That's, that's going to be trouble. Yeah, that looks tough back there. All right, so it looks like Nina did find her way into the fairway, so just looking to bite off probably anywhere around the 300-foot range and keep herself in the middle here. That's a nice little scoot back into the fairway. Should keep her in position to be able to pick up this birdie. Yep, that's a smart play. I mean, there's, I don't know if there's much else you can do there. Yeah, she probably could have went to like a patent pending, but that's that's how you that's how the big numbers come in, you know. Right. With with the pitch out that she's going for, you know, kind of worst case is now a bogey. So. Yeah, and she still has the opportunity to get up and down. You you take uh, this was a beautiful drive. Coming it's out of it. Out. If if you take that patent pending shot, you know now you're trying to save par probably, so you're trying to rip a driver, and then, man, if you miss that. You're talking bogey, double bogey. She might still be able to save the par. This looks great. Yeah. Great shot. Yeah, that's oh, what wow. I mean right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great shot. That was probably in the 350 to 380 range from where, where she basically just had to pitch out from. So that was a yeah, really great it. scramble from Paige. Good shot from Nina, leaks out a little bit. She's inside the circle, but this is a tricky green. A lot of skinny trees to navigate, and also the, in combination with this elevated basket can make putting pretty tricky. So you want to put it close if possible, like Holly did there. That was a, a nice upshot. Yeah, definitely an interesting green. I really haven't seen a green like this before. Um, yeah, made, made for. Uh, it's gonna make some fun putts. Good, a good green to play uh, horse on or, or putt yeah. or whatever you want to call it. You know, a lot of fun little straddles. Got to kind of work the disc left to right. Not particularly fun right now, though. It seems. Let's see if Holly can knock one down. Yeah. Nicely done. Puts it on the pole. It's going to grab her a share of the lead again. Kind of a tough day for Holly. We've seen some kind of putting struggles here and there, but still. Keeping herself in the mix, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. right. I believe that was a par save for, or was that a birdie? I guess it's Oh my God, that five. was a birdie, yeah, yeah. It's a par five, that's crazy, wow. So you're that's talking a, that was even a better shot. Yeah. 
Yeah, if, if she doesn't go long into the rough, she's looking at an eagle chance. Yeah. Wow. So never mind. I stand correct. <laughs> Still a one-stroke lead for Paige. Heading into hole 17 here. Par 3, 240 feet. We are looking at it from the long tee here. They're playing the short tee, which is up there on the right. Um, there is an OB soccer field on the left-hand side. If you fade out early left, this ditch plays as all inbounds for this tournament. So I think most players are just going to try to throw a hyzer into the green and hopefully kind of just get lucky through the trees. There is like a straight, quote-unquote, pure gap at the basket, but that brings that out of bounds into play if you kick left. So I think the safe play is to just throw the wide hyzer on the right and let it fade back and kind of take your circle's edge putt from the ditch. Or you or get just, through the trees and, and yeah. or actually she went long, I think, and it's gonna have a, a come. Oh wow. Okay. I, I see what you mean now. You wanna come up a little early into that early ditch. Okay. I get it. Yeah. Like this kind of just has to get lucky. It doesn't it lands in the ditch. She's gonna have like a, you know, shallow circle two putt. But yeah, the the OB is you see that end of a flag on the left hand side is out of bounds. So this is in danger of finding it. Uh, Maybe. Might have got past it, honestly. But even if it did, there's okay. a bunch of trees over there, so it's going to be a tricky up and down. That looks smooth out of the hand. Must have caught a tree. Yeah. I think both of those shots that Nina and Paige threw, although they looked good, were a little inside of what they wanted. I think, I think they're both trying to pull it a little wider to the right and kind of push farther down the fairway before fading. Um, because, yeah, if you can get pin high on the right, you're going to have, like, a 25-footer. Um, but if you come up short where they are, this is kind of just a layup from 50. I see. Is there much danger going, like, if Pedro had ran that, is there much danger past the basket? Not really. Um, it's just it's just kind of a tricky. From where Holly yeah. is, there is, because she could, you know, roll back into that ditch. But, yeah, it's kind of a weird little green. Kind of a finicky little hole, but... Just gonna yeah, see a bunch of pars. Any birdies on the day for 17. Just two. Deanne Carey and Sandy Gast get the shout out. This one averaged 3.05 just over par. See that a lot on this course. A lot of holes averaging right around par. A couple birdies, a couple bogeys. Good amount of score separation. We love to see it. Speaking of score separation. Hole 18, the hardest hole on the entire course, is a par 5, 615 feet. The tunnel off the tee is very narrow. You have this kind of mound that rides the whole right side of the fairway. You have a bunch of skinny trees on both sides. Um, I would say this fairway goes about 350 feet until it opens up a little bit, but it only opens up into just like a smattering of trees that kind of scatter their way along the second half of the fairway so it's kind of a pick your poison but goal number one off the tee throw whatever disc you're comfortable with and try to keep it in the fairway it's very hard to do but if you're able to do it it's going to make this hole a lot easier where holly kick two could is probably just a pitch out that makes sense see Paige going with a slower disc so it yeah, lands a little yeah. softly it's perfect there yeah, there is a little bit of a bubble where she landed um, that you can kind of see on the, the left-hand side looking at it from this direction, which is not a bad place to land. Oh, Jordan's so close to getting through, but just kicks left at the end of that flight. I'm surprised Nina's going to the backhand here. I kind of like the forehand on this hole because when it fades out oh, into yeah. that hill, yeah. then the hill kind of brings it back into the middle. But she obviously knows her game much better than I do because that was just a perfectly thrown little mid-range shot right in the middle. Ooh, forehand tracker, Where, what are we at? I think that's number four, but not what she was looking for there. Somehow gets up and over the hill. Yeah, you it's don't, be a you tough don't spot. account for that. You know, you know, you know if you, you, she's probably saying to herself, if I throw the roller, at least I won't go up on the hill. So unfortunate to get all the way up there. You see Holly just have to pitch out. Now looking to get past the end of this tight first half of the fairway into the open. She does a nice job of that. Probably less than 200 feet from over there to get up and down and save her par. Oh, I 
that's that's a tough kick. Yeah. Best drive of the group from Paige, but just not able to capitalize. Early release. Yeah, she probably wants that one back. And we can barely see her. But it looks like a good yeah, out. Yeah, nice shot. Yeah. Yeah, nice out from Jordan. Should still have a chance to save the par. I think if she gets up and down from there. Paige now in scramble mode. This is a nice shot to bite yeah, off yeah. some distance. Yeah, you can just see this. This is what it's like off the fairway on this entire course. Yeah. Just yeah. not fun. Brutal. But finding ways to get through. What a, what a challenging hole to end on, too. Yeah, hardest hole of the day is hole 18, of course. So most players, you're just just like by this point, you're just like get me off this course. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like just I'll take my par and uh, head out. Pretty straightforward upshot here from Holly. Looks like she's thrown that nicely. Should be able to save that par. With a, a tricky little putt though. Another another yeah. elevated basket. They they, they kind of work them in here on um, you know spots where you know you might be looking to make up a stroke, but you can get yourself into trouble if you get too aggressive. So that's going to be a, a tester as well. It, you know I I've come to find like the past like you know I don't know like five six tournaments I've played. I feel like I come into the last two holes and I'm like, all right, these are the, this is easy, it'll be fine. It just never is. It's, it's always something tough happens at the end, and uh, everyone's got to deal with it here. Oh, dodge it, Dave. Nice dodge, I assume, from Dave. But some tricky putts here. Nice putt there from yes. Nina. Saves the par. Keeps her at 500. We will see if that is good enough to stay on the lead card. For the final round. Nice comebacker from Jordan as well. Only one birdie on the day. Shout out to Chelsea Basley for picking that one up, gaining one and a half strokes on the field. Wow. Well done. Holly looking to knock down this par putt. Oh, just leaks it a little left. Catches enough chains that uh, she can go flying past, but definitely one she's going to want back. Yeah, I think that is going to make Paige Shoes one stroke lead into a two stroke cushion. Again, we'll see what the rest of the field did out here. But with that par tap in, at least on the card, your leader is Paige Shoe with round, one round to play as we head back to Splinter City for the third and final round of this Myrtle Beach Open. Shot Take. of the round. Paige with a little Anheuser flex coming back in. A little skippage and absolutely part. Love to see it. And she is at the top of the leaderboard after that five under 977 rated second round. We'll be joined by Holly Finley, Nina Guerrero, and Juliana Corver, the GOAT, back on the lead card for the third and final round. It'll be great to watch her again. Shout out to the Norse gods as well as our Patreon family for making this coverage possible. We appreciate you. Like I said, one more round, Splinter City. Make sure you're subscribed to both Heiser Media and Gatekeepers YouTube channels so you don't miss it when it comes out. We'll see you there.